Good morning and a massive warm welcome to Carnation Crafts. We're live in the Carnation Crafts studio and today we're looking at some very special vignettes which Carnation Crafts have brought to us. Hey Soph, how are you doing lovely? Are you okay? Uh, look, Miss Taz is very happy right now. So if you've just made Miss Taz happy, happy, happy because she is able to get comments on the screen. So she's been playing with some new software and she's very excited with her little self because she's managed to do something brand new this morning, which is lovely on a bank holiday. I hope you're all having a really lovely extended weekend uh, and that you're all having some fun. Uh, <laughs> Carol says, hey up Carla and Miss Taz, hey up. It's nice now because Taz can see the comments that you're making, which is lovely. Uh, Val says, morning Carla, hope all is well your end. So I'm gonna tell you some very exciting news before you get on and then I will get on. So today is the day that my beautiful, beautiful boys officially moved back in with me. So I've got them permanently instead of just at weekends. So I am very excited. So if you could all just be excited with me because my boys are coming, I'm so excited. Um, Lots of you saying good morning. It is lovely to have your company as always. We're going to have a look at these vignettes. So these vignettes seem to have two names, Fruit Salad and Summer Bliss. You will find them on the Carnation Crafts website under the name Summer Bliss. They are on the deal of the day today, which is absolutely awesome. And they are a fiver. So it is, uh, you know, it, it's a relatively cheap price, isn't it? For dyes that you may already have, which means we're refreshing all of our dyes. Um, and we're looking back at old dyes that you might have. We're giving them a brand new lease of life and this gives us new colorways. But it also means that we get to use a load of dyes from different collections and we bring them all together. But there's only 12, well, just under 13 hours left on that deal. So, um, you know, it's it's only on for today. I don't know what price they'll be after that. Lorraine says, Buenos dias from Estepona. Humberta says, good morning, lovely Carla and Miss Taz. Um, Carol says, I, I have most of them, just check from the website. Yeah, I think a lot of you will. Um, Suzanne says, hi Carla, I'm sitting outside my caravan in, uh, is it Limington, Limington in Hampshire on the Naughty Step? Uh, Bev has already ordered hers and downloaded them. Helen says, good morning. It is so, I do love it when you guys join me because it feels like I know you. So it's nice to have you all here for bank holiday and we can have an hour together and just do some stuffs. So I've got three demonstrations for you this morning. Two of them are in principle kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna try, <laughs> never tried this before and it might be a disaster to do two demos at once. So I'm going to work simultaneously on two demos and then I have a third demo to do which is completely different. Um, so we will get it done. Alison says hello, hello, hello. Right, so what I'm going to ask Miss Taz to do is just go on the overhead for me so that I can show you the vignettes that we've got. So this is one of them uh, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Pamela saying bought mine earlier. I've nearly uh, all the dyes already. I know and that's the thing, isn't it? Um, that we've already got so many of these dyes, which means that they're just getting a new lease of life. Nikki says, hello, Carla, loving the shows. That's lovely to hear. Thank you, Nikki. Um, Dorothy says, hi, Colour and Taz, lovely to see you again. Ruth says, good morning, got mine, loving the new colours. Jam Bird says, morning all. Um, yeah, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun and play because this isn't, um, <laughs> Lorraine says a Monty Python moment then. This isn't about sort of launching a collection or anything like this. This is about getting something sort of brand new for our old things. So it's like, I don't know how to phrase it best, but it's like upcycling what we already have, which is lovely. So we've got these gorgeous vignettes. For those of you who are brand new to Carnation Crafts and you don't know what this black line is, I will just explain that this is a mirrored vignette. A normal one would not have the black line down the center, but when we've got them, we are literally folding it onto that black line just about so you can snip into them and you wouldn't do it with another piece of paper under more underneath. But once we've got it into that position, we spray glue the inside, stick it together, pop the die on top and put it through your machine. And when it comes out, it has got the image on both sides. I know most of you know that already, but for those of you who are newcomers, you may not. So let's have a look at these vignettes. I'm gonna go through each one of them with you. I'll go through the backing papers with you and then we're gonna start on the demos. <laughs> we're gonna try and do a double. This should be fun, Miss Taz. So we've got these gorgeous, isn't that beautiful, that rose? 
so stunning. I love all the detail work on these. I think they're so pretty. So we've got this one. We have your dropper flora here, which has got all your pretty, I love these. And I love these for putting sentiments in, so it's almost like a paper clip, it's so sweet. But the colors on them are so rich, right? And I think it's so lovely to have something that is so vibrant, it's gorgeous. Then we've got your champagne, and you've got your ice bucket, which is again, done in gorgeous colorway, and they go together so well. So when we start bringing in these colors, you can see how Nick and the creative team have pulled together the colors. So this green is the same as this green, which means, again, we're not getting that clash. So to just whip through these, we've then got your gorgeous Magnolia Corner. Now I'm gonna remember the names that I remember, the other ones I'm just gonna make names up because it's me. Uh, so there's that. You've got your long line bow, I love that. So the original one of that was pink, if you all remember. And now it's, can you remember it, Taz? And now, do you remember them all? And now this one is obviously in those fawn colors, so super sweet. Your gorgeous plant pot. So now the great thing about the plant pot is if you remember the original plant pot was already in two colorways, so you've now got three colorways for this. So again, we can take this forward in so many ways because you can cut that three times in different colors and because it's quite a large die, you could put them next to each other and make an elongated card, which is really gorgeous and have different florals coming out of each one. And we know there's enough florals incarnation to take that to a whole new level. That's all your bits and bats that go with your, um, your plant pot. I, because I can never remember the name for this. I always just say it's a trowel and, and a fork. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know if it's called a fork. It is now. Your frames. So these are what we're going to be playing with today. Um, Helen says, Carla, I use Carnation Crafts Pro Print paper. My colours are never as vibrant as yours. Is there a right or wrong side to the paper? Yes, Helen, there is. Good question. So Helen, on Pro Print paper, you have a smooth side and a rough side. And I'm gonna be the first to tell you that it's hard to tell on some of them. Two tricks that I've learned. When you take it out of the packet, it's got kind of a, almost a curl on the paper, just a very slight sort of dome on the paper. And usually where it domes forward, so forward facing as such, that's the smooth side and that's the side you print on. So that's, that's a rule of thumb for me. However, weirdly, that doesn't work with the 170. It does with the 120 and it does with the 220, but it doesn't on the 170. <laughs> Honestly, if you could see how excited Miss Taz is in the background, because she's got your comments on the screen. Mr. Mark Judd, hello, sir. That's our boss. Happy uh, bank holiday to you, Mr. Mark. I hope you're having a really lovely time. So when you've got your pro print, are you so excited, Miss Taz? She's literally doing a little dance and you can hear little squeaks in the background. If you have got your pro print, you've got the 170 and you can't work out which side it is, and I've had difficulty, take a Sharpie and just put a little mark. If it's on the smooth side, it will glide over the surface. If it's on the rough side, you'll see the little bumpies in it. And so then you know how to do them. Um, it says, Val, Carla, would you be possible, please, for you to inbox me instructions on how to resize the scan and cut? So if I want to resize anything, it would all be in proportion. Um, all of those videos are already on either inside the Facebook group or they're on the YouTube channel, which is called Carnation Crafts, not Carnation Crafts TV. They're separate channels. And all of those are in there. There's the USB videos in there. Uh, so that's where you'll find all that information. So when you come off this one, go to Carnation Crafts on YouTube, not Carnation Crafts TV. And there's an absolute ton of tutorials in there. So everything will be on there for you. Um, Helen says, thanks, that helps a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a learning curve, I think, Helen. The other side to it, I will say though, we have got super strong lightning, lighting in the studio where I'm sitting and overhead above my head. And so these are going to look slightly more vibrant than you're gonna get at home. Not much, but they will look slightly more, um, full colored and it's partly to do with the lights that are on it but pro print is just the most amazing stuff 
We've got your gorgeous trellis. I've always loved this so much because I love that I can play and detail with it and I can tuck florals into it. I can build up that picture going through. So those smaller than midi flower arrangements and things like this where we can tuck and build are just so pretty. And it's such a gorgeous complement to the flower pot as well. Then we've got your gorgeous, I love these, traveling light. This is Miss Taz. This is Miss Taz. It's how she travels. Always with the things, always. She's always got the great big bags. I have a weekend bag. When you're coming for a couple of hours. Then you've got your gorgeous cups of tea here. So it says cheers to you. I love these and I love this flick of red that's in the bottom of them because sometimes the tiniest amount of color can be the most powerful thing. Um, it's just really pretty and I love, love, love the design of it. This is one of your other frames. So you can see this is super, super bright, Helen, super bright. Um, and on screen, because I can see the screen in front of me and I can see how bright it is. I can tell you it's not as bright on my actual paper. Humberta, Humberta you've just made Miss Taz very happy. She's put your comment on screen and she's just given me a look which suggests that I'm the unusual one. This is because I don't own bags and handbags and things. I just throw things into a carrier bag and walk around. I think I'm the only person that goes into the studios at C and C with just a carrier bag. Everyone else has got these fancy things. I've just got a carrier. I'm just not that human. I'm not grown up enough. Uh, so then we've got your beautiful, beautiful little teapots here. Your, oh, it's not a teapot, is it? What would you call it? Like a jug, beautiful jug. Um, just really, really gorgeous. And I love, again, all the little colours for the sandwiches and all the pieces that come together. Um, it says, that sounds like me with having had six kids. A holiday was every day with Bulma bits. Yeah. I think when you've got kids, you end up with everything, don't you? Susan says, that's how I travel with my craft stuff to my caravan. In your carrier bag. We're classy birds, that's why. But you know what? It works. They're a bag. It's fine. It just causes my mum some stress because she thinks I'm old enough to have a handbag. You've got your gorgeous square frame here. Really lovely. Val says it's a Pims jug. Pims. Oh, I do love a glass of Pims. I think we might be back to the beginning. I just wanted to make sure I had printed all of those out for you to see before we started demoing. And I'm just gonna have a look at the very beautiful backing papers that they've given us as well, because again, that vibrancy. So there's six different backing papers here that you can print, she says, bringing out the same two. I just printed two of each. I love that color. Really in love with that color. It's such a gorgeous sort of sage, isn't it? So there's those ones and then you've got your pinks and then your darker pinks and then the others I might have used I'll be honest in my demos but that's one of each. So it's the same as a normal Packer Pro print. Uh, you've got two of each so you've got your darker tone and your lighter tones on each colour. Aren't they gorgeous together? Isn't that just because to me that is a feast for the eyes. I just think that's gorgeous really really gorgeous so I love how they've come together with everything on this collection there's something super succulent about it right so uh, are we going to try and do something that we've never done before and do two demos at once this could go horribly wrong oh, it's a new show day it's it? new show day we're going to try so the reason that I'm doing them is because it's two of the frames so they're, they're, they're you know they're similar so I thought well I do want to show you two of them. There is three, but I wanted to show you two and just show you how they look when they're finished. So they're not particularly complex demos, uh, but so, <laughs> how I'm gonna do this, Miss Taz. But it's pointless doing each one separately because it's the same demo. So let's do it them together. She says, if I can get all my decoupage bits out. Right, so the circle one first. So you know that when you're using a circle frame, <coughs> Carla, we all have faith in you. <laughs> well, that's, I could put an egg timer on as well and time the whole thing and we could see how well I do. Um, actually, no, that's making, that's giving me anxiety. 
Right, so when we're using the circle frames, you need to cut a edge off the bottom. So what the way I do it is always cut my edge off first normally, and then I try and line up and do my score line at the top. Because if I've done my score line, sometimes my bottom cut is skew width to where my top is. And I've done it a million times. I've done it live on telly a million times, where it's just slightly skew width. So when you stand the card up, it's kind of at an angle. Uh, and that's no good for our crafting needs. So that's a tip from me. Let's go in. Let's do our base card first and just make sure our little didgeridoos are together and push the square one. Same thing, scored at half an inch, push that away, just shuffle them together, always towards the body, ignore the cat hair. One day I'll do a show and there'll be no cat hair and everybody will wonder what's happened. Um, right, Jane says, I've got mine printed uh, already. Gorgeous colours, have made a quick card already with the roses. Aren't the roses beautiful in this collection? There's something be just stunning about them. Right, so I've got my two card bases made, my tent layers are made, and then I'm going in. I've used the same backing papers for these, so you could see them as the same thing. I'm trying to essentially make the same demo, but with the different frames. That's my uh, sort of idea. So again, I'm not gonna be able to see this straight because it's I can't lean forward. I know you all know this, but it's just to keep you posted. Same one here. and place it. So if it's not straight, you're just gonna have to use your imaginations a little bit because I can't lean over without you just getting my big head in the way, so apologies. Nobody wants my big noggin. Right, we're in with the five mil here. I'm doing the super chunk. Now you might not like that look at home. If you don't, you don't need to use foam tape. If you're somebody, this is this is a tip I can give you that I've sort of discovered as I've been going along with crafting. If you don't like any rays and you're not into the idea of shadows, my best advice for you is when you're doing, yes, use red liner tape, absolutely, but actually you're just as well using a tape pen. If you don't want any shadows at all and it's just going straight flat, it's really quick to just use that tape runner and put it on. It's just, you know, easy done. Uh, so there's that. Right, just to remind you, these are available on the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk, and it's on the deal of the day, and you can get them today for £5. Um, John says, brilliant tip. There have been so many times I've tried to make a round card that ended at one key. I know, it's a frustration. So what I've discovered is if you cut the bottom bit off first, because it's a circle, it doesn't matter where you cut, if you cut that off first, then you can place it on your scoreboard, right, up to the, the edge that you butt against, and that means it's straight when you score it. If you've scored it first, it's much harder than on a trimmer to get it the other way. So this, believe me, this has been a learning curve because I've done it wrong so many times. So whenever I find something that just makes my life easier, I, I like to try and pass that on to you guys where possible. Um, because it's been a huge learning curve for me. I know sometimes things can be trickier. Look at those two colours together, aren't they beautiful? So we're placing through. It's like a double demo, Miss Taz. On here, I've still got five mil, but I cut it into tiny pieces. Uh, and we've just got some little pieces there. So they're just on the backs of the flowers where they're not interfering with the front visual. That's all I've done. Uh, Leslie says, hope your cat is doing okay, Carla. Miss Phyllis is okay. Um, she's very sorry for herself at the minute. She goes to uh, hopefully the hospital tomorrow. Uh, she has, I think it's an abscess on her head from um, a yucca plant uh, that she managed to escape outside and she's an indoor cat. And I think she's maybe had a little um, cut on her head that's become infected. She's very swollen and she's a bit sore, but she's we've been in contact with the vet. Uh, and she's eating fine and drinking fine. Uh, I think she's just a bit miserable. Um, so we will get her well. Same again on the circle. Oh. And just take these foams off. Now these, I think, look how well five mil lends itself on these frames with that shadow underneath. I just think that is absolutely gorgeous. The space in between it is so pretty. 
and I'll lift it in a minute so that you can see that raise. Uh, I'm just taking off some of these, I won't take off all. And just place this now, just make sure you've got that bottom edge. What I'm going to do here, because I need the frame to be the right way, if I get my frame on a wonk, when I try and stand it up, even though that's just circular and I can guess it, it will be wonky when the card stands up because the frame is. So what I'm doing is where I've cut it off, can you see that? I'm just butting it up against my silicon mat and then I'm going to place that on top so that I know that that is the absolute bottom and I can work out where that's going to sit. And that should theoretically be about perfect. And that's just pleasing to me. So when I lift this and raise them, look at that beautiful chunky depth. So then you start to see how we've got that gorgeous shadow play doing. Really pretty, really, really pretty. Right, let's bring it in the mat. Let's start decoupaging. I'm almost multitasking here, Miss Taz. And you know that's not something that I would normally do. So let's bring in the bits and bobs. And it's bank holiday, so I'm going to decoupage all of these elements, but just quickly. It won't take too long. So pop these down. These gorgeous cards. They're like rhubarb and custard, right? It's got that really gorgeous colour into it. So ball tool wise, go in for one that's appropriate for the size you're using. Outside, in. Never changes. Just work in your outside edge first, break those fibers, and then work in. The great thing about working on small surface areas like these is that they just mold so well. It's much easier to do it on small surfaces than it is on large. Um, and it takes less practice on the smaller ones because it's easier to go through. And we're just going round. And around again. Look how pretty they are. And then we're just pulling through tiny little bits. You could change your ball tool. Actually, you should really change your ball tool. Once they get smaller like that, using a bigger ball tool, probably not the best thing to do. We should change for the right size. So we'll go in just with a smaller edge on this one. They're so pretty. Now what I'm trying to do here, because it's decoupage, so I'm using decoupage instead of just a normal vignette where I would shape it out. I'm using it as a decoupage layer purposefully, obviously. So what I'm trying to do is just get the dome. So normally, I think you'll remember, I normally tell you to then shape it back on itself. I don't need to do that with decoupage elements. Um, that's not the goal. The goal is to have it domed. Um, right, so let's have a look. See if I've got enough pin flare in here and hope it hasn't dried up. Make sure I've got the right ones. So let's piece this through. I'm not squishing, I'm just laying it on top and I'm just making sure it's got enough squish to squish, if that makes sense, so that it's not, um, I just want it to adhere to the one below it. I don't want to lose the depth on the pin flare. Now, a lot of people prefer to decoupage with foam pads. So you have to find what's right for you um, because it's just a matter of preference as we're crafting. Let's go through. They're gorgeous, aren't they? I love the colour. Sorry about this. I know it's much of the same, but it's how we work them up, isn't it? And I normally don't take the time to decoupage on air because I know you all know how to decoupage as a rule. Uh, so I normally either do it in advance or I don't bother with the decoupage so much. But I think we've got a little bit of time with it being bank holiday and it's not a full die launch. So let's use that time and make the most of it. A little bit in here. And these are just going to bring me up to these top buds. 
I think decoupage is really important um, because visually it just makes everything bounce. Place this on. Same again. Now these ones are a bit more tricky because you've got less space. So what I'm going to do, where I would normally go in the center, I'm not. I'm going to go on the bottom petal and I'm going to go on the top petal so that both of them stay raised. The rest of them will bowl down, which is what I want. And make sure I get this in the right place. And just a little touch so it squishes enough to adhere. That's all I want. The rest of it can do as it needs. Same thing on this one. I'm not going in the center because if I squish down even a little bit, it's going to push out. It's not a big enough surface area for the pin flare. Gorgeous. Now this one's tiny, so we're not going in. Too much. This I'm not too worried about. I just need that slight adhesion. Make sure I get it into the right spot. Uh, I think you belong over here. Have you die cut the circle? Um, missed that bit. Yeah, I cut. You can choose. You can have a center, or you don't need to. Um, it's up to you which way you do it. I cut them out. Actually, sometimes I keep them as well. Um, it, it is just what it is. Uh, Lynn says, I didn't think there was a right way for paper, so just done the Sharpie test and now it's a lot brighter. Yeah, you know, it's one of those things. Until you know, you know, I do try and explain it as often as I can. I'm very aware often that I'm repeating myself um, through certain aspects, but we've got so many new crafters all the time that I think it's important that they get the information as well. Um, so we do say occasionally about it, but I'm sorry if you've missed that in the past because it's frustrating. But yeah, the right side makes such a difference. Um, Linda says, Kai Carla, love the colours. I'm multitasking too. Watching while knitting a fine baby shawl. Wow. For my great, great nephew who will be born in October. That's amazing, Linda. Well done. Right. I've got two tags and I want them to sit up. I want them to be prouder than the piece below and the decoupage. So what I did was take my five mil and I doubled it. So I've now got a centimetre, so this will sit higher. I took a brad or an eyelet and I put that in it and I've stamped out in red to match the reds of the dies. I've done the same with both. Added a tiny piece of string and I'm just gonna get this one, hopefully roughly centre, and just place that string above. And this one I might do a bit of an angle. Miss Taz is either dancing or she's got her hands up, I'm not sure. I managed to get YouTube comments as well. We have a question. Okay. This one I'm doing at an angle. And placing through. And I just did two at once. So basically, these are very similar frames, but you can see how completely different they are when they're side by side. But they are so beautiful, and these colours are just exquisite together. So I just think it's a really nice way for you to see how both of those line up, how they come together with the backing papers and how they come together with the decoupage. There is every chance that when you are crafting with these particular ones, you'll be adding in different vignettes. I didn't want to muddy the waters. I wanted you to see them for what they are. So I hope that helps. I am gonna do a more complex demo in a second. Um, and I hope you understand why I wanted to do them together because it's essentially the same demo, but I just wanted you to see them side by side because they're just gorgeous. There is a third one as well, but I thought that might just be <laughs> pushing it too far, doing three at once. So I just did the two, but I just think they're absolutely sublime. Aren't they gorgeous? Now, if I pick, am I okay to put them towards the camera, Taz, so that you can see them without the shadow light above, because it shows them in different lighting when we do them. There you go. Now you see the shadow play from having everything on that higher foam tape. And I just, can you look at all the shadows? This one here, isn't that so pretty? Just gorgeous. So that is the frames and I just, I was so blown away with these colors. They're just gorgeous. So we have a YouTube question. Which question is this, Ms. Taz? 
Uh, with the download, is it the quality of the paper or the printer type and ink which gives the vibrant colors? Donna, thank you for the question. Doesn't matter which printer you have. I mean, you need a color one. Um, my printer is a 50 quid printer. It's not an expensive printer. I'm gonna be really boring now, so I apologize to you all. I'm sure some of you have heard me talk about this previously, but when you're looking at an image on your computer, so when you open up a PDF on your computer, your computer, your individual computer, has a what's called an IECC profile, and it's a color profile. And when we're trying to print that color profile, it, it doesn't translate to the printer. It just doesn't, it doesn't. You could have a printer that was 4,000 pounds. It's still not gonna be able to translate exactly what that color is on the screen because the two will not parry. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of factors involved in that. And it's an incredibly complex um, sort of situation. So when we download a photo, for instance, from our phone and we print it on a piece of printer paper, it becomes very dull you know, there's no life in that photo. And if you were to go to, um, you know, a photography shop and get, can you remember the old fashioned days when you used to take your film in and they used to, they used to give you your, your, your photographs two weeks later, you had to go and collect them two weeks later. Um, they, they print it obviously on photo paper because that photo paper is designed in a specific way to really magnify the colors. And ProPrint works exactly the same way as that. So the difference between ProPrint and standard paper is the fact that ProPrint will not absorb the color from the ink, which normal paper does. And it's to do with the chalk content and it's to do with you know the way the paper is sort of formed and built. So your colors on ProPrint stay on the top. So you get this really vibrant pop of color and it's just different. Whereas on a normal standard piece of paper, those inks are absorbing down to the paper. So if you take a normal piece of printer paper and you turn it over and you've printed a full color image on it, you'll kind of see the image through it. It'll be, um, it'll have just bled through. Whereas on something like ProPrint, it won't because the ink's sitting on the top. So it doesn't absorb all the way through the paper. So you're getting all the color and it's just the difference of um, if you pour, let's put it this way, it's a really bad example, but you'll get what I mean, or a bad analogy. If you pour washing up liquid into um, a, just a bowl, a white, into a white bowl, it's vivid green, right? Because that white, white, it's not absorbing, it's not doing anything. But if we put it in with water, it disappears completely. You don't get the color at all. And that's what I mean about ProPrint, it's the same thing. You're basically doing the washing up liquid test on a piece of paper, that ink is sitting on top. So you get the color, you get the vibrancy. We're not diluting it in any way. So I hope that helps. ProPrint is, as far as I'm concerned, the best. Doesn't matter what printer you've got, ProPrint will make the difference, but you have to make sure you're printing on the right side, uh, as we've chatted about this morning. So you need the smooth side and you're printing on the smooth side. And again, just to reiterate, if you can't work out which is the smooth side and which isn't, two rules of thumb, on, certainly on the 220 and the 120, when you take it out of the packet, it's got a little curve on the paper. Normally where that curve is, so let me find a piece of paper, hold on. So when you get it out of the paper, it sort of is that shape. It, as soon as you take it out of the cardboard box and it's this side that is the shiny side. The bit that's curled forward is the shiny side. If you use ProPrint and you can't work out, you don't have that curl on it for whatever reason, 170. And 170 is the hardest I find to work out which is the smooth and which is the rough. It always takes me a while to do it. And the best way to do that is take the pack, take one sheet off the pack and keep the other the same way so you still know which way you're going. Use a Sharpie, it will be super smooth on the smooth side. On the rough side, it'll be bumpy and you might have little white marks showing through it. It's just the difference. It'll be really vibrant on the, on the right side. So I hope that helps. That's ProPrint in a nutshell, and as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't get better than that. Um, it's brilliant. Um, Dorothy says, hi, Cara and Taz. Brilliant demo, thank you. I tried to download the vignettes yesterday, but it told me out of stock. I'll try again later, uh, but have you seen this before? Thanks again, Dot. Yes, Dot, there has been a couple of problems with that just recently, and um, Carnation are on it at the minute. For some reason, 
the website because obviously on a digital download there's no such thing as out of stock um, because it's a digital download and normally on a website you have what's called an SKU code and that tells you how many there are so if there's a hundred and a hundred people buy them it'll say come up and it'll say out of stock for some reason the Carnation website at the minute keeps doing that with digital downloads so if it happens please do put just a comment in the Facebook Carnation Crafters group and the uh, admin team will get onto it straight away and fix the problem. Uh, but it's not you, it is uh, the machine. Uh, let's have a look. Judy says, following from the question about printing vignettes, could you please let me know what settings on the printer you recommend? Yes, absolutely. And that is a super valid question as well. So when I set it, I always set mine. So we would tell you to set it to glossy photo paper um my printer doesn't have an option for that i can only set it to matte photo settings but i always set it to photo paper and the only one i get the option for is matte so i set it to that and then i put my quality to best and i'm not going to get too technical or involved at this point but there is an option there where i can save that profile it'll just say do you want to you know save this as default and i name it carnation because normally speaking if i'm just doing the kids letters or something like that then I'm not going to be doing it on pro print paper and I'm not going to use the best quality settings because I don't need to. So um, I save it as Carnation and then whenever I'm printing Carnation vignettes, I always use that profile. Um, it says, Mask, another question about pro print. What would you use the 170 GSM for, please? For me, the 170 is a choice. So 170 is great for um print this is on 170 they're on 170 now i'm going to be totally honest with you when i'm doing um my backing papers often i'll use 220 so it depends how many layers i'm using and often it'll depend on what build i want to use so how much foam tape i want to use because the higher i lift it if i'm using dense foam tape the higher i lift it the stronger i need it to be so i would use 220 for that if I'm going to keep it on a three mil foam tape or a one mil foam tape or red liners, I'm not bothered. Then it doesn't matter. I would go to 170. I would never print my backing papers on 120 because it's too flimsy for me. Um, 170 is also probably, if I'm totally honest, probably the best for people who just do the one sided vignettes. There's no reason for you to be using 220 if you're not going to be sculpting an amount unless you like that really dense quality. But 170 is great for the single sided vignettes because it's strong enough and if it's just gonna sit on top as a decoupage layer, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you're going to use a ball tool or you're gonna in any way manipulate it, then you, you need it to be uh, a 220 if it's a single sided and the 120 for your mirrored vignette so it comes out 240 which is what I always use. So my two go-tos as a rule are the 120 and the 220. But I gotta say, it is absolutely personal choice and the more you craft with it, the more you'll learn for yourself which way works for you because my way might not work for you. It's just, we find ways of doing it. When I first started with Carnation, I used 170 predominantly um, for single-sided and for my mats and layers. It's just as time's gone on, I've worked out that the other way works better for me. So I hope that helps. Um, it's just finding out your preferences. So I'm using this wee flower pot and I've scored half an inch, keep it towards your body so that you can shuffle the two together Make sure you've got them in the right place. As they are, butt it up, push it down. All done. I mean, it's such a cute card base. It is so sweet, this card base. Now, I've got my little flower pot vignette. So double-sided, mirrored vignette. Doesn't matter which way I use it particularly, it's all good. Now, I want to put it on top, obviously, but I want to trap the trellis in it first. So I'm not using any foam tape on this at all. I will just glue it down, not an issue, but I want to trap the trellis. So I've got the trellis here and I just want to place it about there. So I'm looking at my two edges, kind of meeting up, but just with a little bit of spacing in case my vignette just doesn't cover the whole thing. So I'm gonna take it to about there. And so in order to do that, I need to use my glue. If you're using a glue, try and use a low, con a low water content PVA, which is Carnation one is. Try and get one that's low water content. It dries quicker, it dries stronger. 
uh, and coming from a quilling background it's important uh, just to get it stuck as quickly as you can because if it slips around it's going to mark your card so I'm not using masses of glue but I am going to glue it into certain points it doesn't matter because it's not going to show on this piece but I do just want to make sure I get my bases covered and then I'm just going to place that down about so so it's about planning ahead because I know that I want this to go down and then I want to put my other piece on top. So it's just about planning ahead. So I now know that covers my trellis completely. So it, you know, when one of the mistakes I used to make an awful lot when I first started card making is I would know in my head that I wanted the trellis to go by, but I was so excited to get the vignette on and we get into habits, don't we? Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a, give it a little plan. I'm just gonna go onto here. Just to remind you, you can get these gorgeous vignettes from the Carnation Crafts website and you can get it from the section that says deal of the day. They're only five quid today. I don't know how much they're going to go up to, but they certainly won't be that cheap in the future. There's a, there'll be what, sorry? 15. 15 quid. So you're saving a tenner today. So that's not, that's not bad. And we've got a YouTube question. Thank you, Taz. Does Carnation sell the adhesive spray for mirrored vignettes? Uh, Donna, no. Uh, I think they're sort of possibly might in the future. I don't know, but certainly no, they don't at the minute. But I can tell you, I use something that's called 3M for Michael, 3M mount spray, and you can get it pretty much anywhere. So if you jot a note of that down, uh, it lasts a long, long time. You need tiny amounts. We don't need to oversaturate it. If you're going to use the mount spray glue, if you're going to use any spray glue, make sure you're using it in a well ventilated space because it can half make you dizzy. Um, and also make sure you spray it into a cardboard box or a carrier bag because otherwise uh, you get glue everywhere and you will have a very black surface underneath as it catches dust. Um, but yeah, the 3M's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I'm just placing little glue dots on these areas, nothing too fancy, just so I can stick this down. Now what I love about the colour palette on this so much, look how pretty that is. What I love about the colour palette here, this whole thing, this whole section, is that it's not, how to phrase this best, it's not showing off if that makes sense. What it's doing is allowing itself to sort of go into the background so that anything I put on top now is going to absolutely pop because it's not stealing the show. It's incredibly beautiful and it's incredibly in intricate and I could obviously piece flowers through all of these holes. Um, so beautifully done and I just think there's something incredibly delicate about that. But the point is it's not it's, it's I can't, you know what I mean, it's not jumping out at you as being in your face. Um, and that is a good thing. Right, we're gonna go in with some florals here. I'll try not to keep you too long. I promise you this is my last demo. Uh, I don't want to take up all of your bank holiday, but let's play. So I'm just gonna give this a little bit of shaping, not too much. Uh, I don't want it to over pop, but I do love the colors on this. really pretty on this magnolia corner corner and again you can see that i'm using this one behind because i don't want it it's a background it's a black background floral i'm going to put color on top of it so this is just to give me uh, more density visually it's not really about stealing the show gorgeous right so now we've got that curvature so this is where I start talking about just manipulate that paper back into a straight edge so these pieces are still straight it's the flowers that pop in with some pin flare not too much we're not over egging the pudding and I'm not using anything on the bottom two these two because I might want to tuck underneath using pin flare allows me to just build and hold. 
So that bit of pin fur that's on the bottom of that is going to hold that nicely. This is going to hold this nicely. And there's enough just of this trellis to hold underneath. Okay, make sure you're using something under your surface as well. And then I'm just going to build on florals now. So we're going to have some fun. Or I am. <laughs> I'm going to have some fun. And I'm just going to build on colour. So I've got all of these beautiful florals and this is the joy of doing a show like this. I would never have time to do this in a normal show. Um, so sometimes when we get to do these specials, they are incredibly special. And I've got all of my bits and bobs. Right, let's go. So take my ball tool. And I'm just going to go in. I'm doing this very quickly. When you're at home, obviously, you will take time and you will just be a little more patient than I get to be when I'm doing these. But if I'm doing, if I was to do the Magnolia Corner, this piece that I've just done at home, and I was sculpting it properly, officially, taking my time, it would take me probably around about, I don't know, five minutes to sculpt each piece, which doesn't sound like long, and it isn't long, but it's worth it. It is worth it. Now I'm gonna tuck some of these through. This is why I don't put pin, pin, pin flare on everything. I'm covering up some of that work that I did before, but it's just adding color and elements as we go, and I'm building height. So pulling through. Always your edges first. Break those fibers and then work down your center. Beautiful colors. Oh, we've got a YouTube question. Do you have the dyes for this? Uh, I do. I On the Facebook Live that was on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, obviously yesterday, there is a full list of all of the dyes uh, there. I've got, some of them, I'll have a brief run through with you with the ones I've got that are with me. Um, but there is a full list of them on the Facebook Live yesterday. And that's just on the Carnation Crafts page on Facebook. Oh, uh, and you'll see it on there. But my memory is not the best. I did have a list, but I left it downstairs because I'm very, well, as I say, my memory is not the best. <laughs> just to, you know re-exemplify that right let's put this let's tuck these through this is why we use pin flare on something like this if i'd used a foam pad i'm more uh committed to what i'm doing and that's why i would be more inclined to use um pin flare in this way because i can swap and change things if i'm not happy with the outcome of it So just running around these petals and going through the motion with that one. Look how gorgeous they are. Can you see that in the white? Beautiful. So you can see as we're going, I'm building shape, dimension, height. I'm just going to tuck that into there, she says. Bring that slightly down so that we're hanging over. We're building all this shape so now it becomes a flowing piece. I just love, love, love everything about the dyes that Carnation produce. Not necessarily, I'm, I'm not necessarily talking about design either, although I do love that. But the way that the cut lines are done so that I can do the thing I love, the thing that makes, you know, it become a piece of art that we're making and it's individual because it's not always easy to do that with dyes. So I'm just laying this on so that there is enough pin flare just on the back. Now, if you're worried about the pin flare being seen on the back of the card, then you can add a, a mat or a layer to the back of it. I'm not too stressed, uh, but there is the option for you there. So I'll be quick with these, I promise. Now that ball tool is probably too small for the job. So I'll go to the larger size. 
you're always trying to find a ball tool that's about the same size as the area that you're using really. So this one then we would go in with a smaller one where you've got those tiny petals at the edge and then use the larger ones on the larger petals. So nothing too fancy. One more. Just running through there. Right, let's tuck these all in. And I'm just going to place just some extra colour as we're going through. Little petals. Aren't they so pretty? And this is the great thing about the decoupage elements that Carnation give us as well. Yes, they are decoupage elements. Yes, I can decoupage with them, but I can use them as individual pieces, almost of ephemera uh, as well. I'm not, I'm not stuck with one way of producing a card. I can do many, many, many things with them. Look how prettily that builds up. So gorgeous, right? I love florals so much. Pop that and just tuck it under that leaf. Help! Help, Miss Taz! It went wandering. So these are from the Magnolia Corner and from Drop of Flora. Um, and they are two of the dyes that are in the new Summer Bliss colour vignettes. One more of these, and then I'm just going to do one last thing, and then we will be done. You can tell I'm concentrating when I go quiet. Because <laughs> Miss Taz will tell you that never happens. Right, so we've got that bit done. Beautiful it is as well. So now let's have a look at this long line bow. The long line bow has two pieces on each end and one in the center and they are all identical. So take your pokey tool and take it from that center line and just pull it round. Just bend it, we're breaking the fibers of the paper. So pull it and it will bend like you would do with a normal ribbon at Christmas, something like that. Now mine may not stick in time, uh, just so you know, I will try, but sometimes this glue gives a little bit and you need to push it down. So we're going to take one and we're going to place it and we're going to push it. And hopefully that'll stick. Sometimes it just comes unstuck. When I, normally when I'm live on telly, it's always useful. And push that one down as well. Look how pretty that is. So we've now got the choices of using this in the pink or using it in these brand new colours. And it's just gorgeous. Look at the dimension on that. So using your pokey tool really gives it that gorgeous curvature. If I'd have just t turned it back on itself, it would be flat. You would have flatter edges here. But because we use that pokey, uh, pokey tool to give it the curvature, it just comes together in a most glorious way. Right, I've got the little tails for it here. So what I'm going to do is just put those tails together first. So a little bit of wet glue on here and a little bit of wet glue on there. Just hold them in. Now, I still need that to be relatively wet when I stick it because I need to know that it's in the right place, which I'm happy with it there, but I'll just tuck it slightly more together. Push them in. So this is why wet glue is so good because it does have just that forgiving moment, but it does now dry quickly. So I'm just gonna place that, push it straight on top, hold it she says until you're certain it's stuck and then bring it look at that absolute perfection right they're so cute and then what I'm gonna do here is just take a tiny tiny piece of three mil foam tape
push just to the center of that bow. I don't want to push these down. I don't want to lose that curvature. Pull those together so that they're really, really fluffing and then place just down right in the center line at the bottom of your card that I mentioned on that. These vignettes are absolutely extraordinary. Let me lift that so you can see it towards the camera. So you can grasp all of the colors. Look how stunning that is. Pretty, right? These are the most gorgeous vignettes. They're called Summer Bliss. They're available on the Carnation Crafts website, which is www.carnationcrafts.co.uk. You can find them on the deal of the day, which is a red button that you'll find at the center in the top of the website. When you go onto it, you can put it into your basket. They're five pounds today. They're gonna to go up to 15 and there's only a few uh, more hours. Like, well, it'll be the rest of the day. I guess it'll be midnight that they'll change over. Um, but you can make, so I'll put these out in front of me so you can see what we've made today in the space of an hour and you can see them side by side and that boom of color that we're getting. Just absolutely incredible. And all that done and dusted. Isn't that so sweet? What an amazing collection they did and what a gorgeous idea. I love it when they do these special vignettes because if I'm paying out 100 pounds for a die collection, then to know that they're gonna bring me new vignettes and those vignettes are gonna change that die. Because as daft as it sounds, if I pay, um, if I pay 20 pounds for a die and it comes with a colorway, that's amazing. If they're gonna then give me another colorway that's gonna make me use it again, that's basically 40 pounds worth of dye then because suddenly it's completely different. It transcends to a different place. And that's why it's so important that Carnation carry on doing this and that they're so passionate about doing it so that we can completely refresh and we can use them together with the originals as well. So if you actually have a look at the original colorways on these, you'll see that they still work together. You can still mix and match and merge, but they're so pretty. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope I've helped answer some questions for you. Um, and we've kept it into an hour. Well done, Miss Taz. I managed this time. We've managed to keep it under an hour, which I don't normally. Um, any questions that you have, you know, I'm always here. So um, we can always answer everything that we can and will do. If you've got any other questions, you can pop them in the Carnation Crafters group as well. Just to let you know that the admin team are not in today. Obviously, it's bank holiday. So if you have sent messages, they probably won't be responded to until tomorrow because they are maintaining office hours. So have a most wonderful bank holiday Monday and absolutely love every second of it if you are off work. If you are at work, also try and make the most of it as well. We will see you this week at some point and until then, please take care and stay safe. Thank you, bye.